Hi, Ray Terry here from All Metal Dryer Vent. We got a dryer vent to fix, clean, update, service, whatever's required. You can tell we got some Whirlpool duets here, front loaders. I'm gonna pull this rascal out. We're gonna look behind it, see what's going on, and uh, we'll get to going here. We're gonna pull the dryer out now and see what's behind here, and see what might fall out, fall off, and what have you. Oh my, there's nothing back there except a, ho a hose with rigid full flex. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna put a periscope back there, side vent periscope into the wall and uh, make things a lot better. There you go. Hey, we decided what we've got here. As you come up, you zoom in and you see the pipe down here, down here in the corner. It's got a little play, but we'll fasten that and secure that firmly. Then I'm gonna back out here and I'm gonna show you. We've got a side vent periscope right here. Side vent periscope right there. That's the mail gonna go in that pipe right there in the wall. That's gonna come down behind the dryer. We're gonna slide right back in there. No flexos, no more, gone. We'll be back. All right, we're gonna brush this vent out. This is the other side of the vent coming from the inside, obviously. It's all rigid, full, uh, structural rigid metal galvanized pipe, so it's good stuff. I'm gonna climb the ladder and we're gonna run this thing through it, this brush. bit awkward to do by yourself. Practice. Not that dirty. It was cleaned about a year ago. But they have a dog, big dog. A lot of dog hair. What we're going to do, we're going to brush this, and then I'm going to go turn the blower back on, we're going to blow it out, and we'll see. I just reached the vertical wall. And we'll go do the same thing inside. Yeah, it's pretty clean. You can hear it rattle around in there on the metal. If it was dirty, and it wasn't kind of up on the same. We got a little bit. We'll see. Okay, we're going to do the same thing inside here as we did out there. It's actually pretty clean. You can hear it rattle around. We're going to remove it and blow it out again, and we'll see what comes out the other side. Okay, the whole idea is to get this periscope right here cut down to length to be positioned on the wall to receive the dryer and we'll show you more when we get back. I'm going to go ahead and cut this down, tape it up, tape the seam, and we'll come back and slide it in. I'll show you the finished product. Now, folks, I'm putting an exhaust extender on here, and what this is, I clamp it on, and it extends exhaust. I'll show you here in just a sec. I'll undo it a little bit and pull it back out. See, that doesn't come out long enough to engage the receiver right here on the periscope, okay? And you'll see once we get it all put together. So we're going to fasten this on here. And you got you must do this to get the proper measurement to the bottom from the side so this will engage properly. We'll be back. Okay. All right, as you see, folks, we have a seam here. I'm going to put foil tape around the seam. And I tape up the, the possible leakage areas and everything. But we're going to tape that, and then we're going to screw it in position to the wall when we get back, and we'll slide it in. All right, see the periscope's been cut down. I've cut pieces off of it, shortened it. And we're gonna come up. We're gonna come 11 and a quarter off that baseboard. 
and two and a half inches to the bottom of this right here to here measured because that's where the exhaust extender will place it and allow that dryer to to engage that receiver straight in we'll be back to watch it go in there in just a sec okay folks there it is exhaust extender with a periscope with a receiver now we're going to slide that back in that receiver due to the the space awareness and all i can't show it to you on video but you get the concept and it works because i've already trial fitted and folks we're going to put it back together a successful operation here clean little fin should stick look at that great airflow great airflow perfect just what we want Terry, I've been doing construction remodeling for over 40 years in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and I've fixed quite a lot, like that, of drywall holes, imperfections, problems in drywall. And what we're going to do here is shoot a small video and show you how to fix a hole like this in, the, in your wall. Okay, that's the standard hole. I frankly don't know how it got that way, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a square hole. And the way I'm going to do it today is I'm going to get my Leatherman out, and I'm going to get a little saw blade out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it square. Let's fold that back in out of our way. And we'll make it square. You don't have to be real neat. And I'm going to show you why we're going to make it square here in just a minute. But it's easier to repair if it's square. Okay? Okay, so now we have a nice little square hole. Let's take this little piece out right here. There you go. Nice square hole. Not perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Because the way we're fixing it, you'll see it works real well. And notice here on the ground, on the floor, excuse me, I put a piece of quarter inch plywood to receive most of the trash just for easier cleanup. That's all. You may want to put a drop cloth down, a piece of plastic or something, but every bit of this can be easily cleaned up, swept, and vacuumed right up. Okay, now, we're going to use a product called Quick Set Light 20. And the 20 right here indicates the amount of time it takes for this product to set up. If you use normal drywall mud, you know, the 5-gallon bucket mixture pre-mixed, it takes up to 24, 48 hours for that to cure up, depending on the humidity. So that means it's going to take one day, two days, maybe three days to patch a small hole like this because you need it for it to dry. Now you can use this right here. It'll sit up in 20 minutes when we come back and second coat it. Okay? One tip I suggest. I have put a water in a mud pan, a drywall mud pan, right? And I put a little water in it. What we're going to do is always, always put the powder into the water. And typically... You always mix more than you need. You don't want to necessarily, but you do. And you mix it up good. Always powder into the water. And I might have gotten real lucky today and put the right amount in there. But you can see I mix it up real good. Always the powder into the water. Okay? Always. That's a little soupy right there. So what we're going to do, we're going to add... Now notice I'm mixing this first. Now this is going to get hard in about 20 minutes. 